Hi everybody, I'm Nofal. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to discuss regarding chicken box or varicella. So chicken box is also known as varicella. So what is meant by chicken box or varicella? It is an acute, highly infectious disease caused by varicella zoster virus. Okay, varicella zoster virus. So chicken box is an acute. That means it's a short term, highly infectious disease. Highly infectious disease caused by varicella zoster virus okay and it is characterized by appearance of the rashes fever and malaise okay that is the definition of the chicken box so what is chicken box chicken box is an acute that is a short term disease highly infectious disease caused by varicella zoster virus and it is characterized by appearance of the rashes fever and malaise okay that is the definition of the chicken pox chicken pox is a acute highly infectious disease caused by varicella zoster virus and it is characterized by fever malaise and the appearance of the rashes that is the definition of the chicken pox next we can see regarding the epidemiological features of the chicken pox epidemiological features of the chicken box so in the epidemiology we know three things will be there first one is agent okay first one is agent agent means the person who is the reason for that disease that is the microorganism here that is a virus that is varicella zoster virus varicella this one varicella zoster virus is the agent also known as human herpes virus human herpes virus 3 okay varicella zoster virus or human herpes virus 3 it is also known as human herpes virus 3 next we can see regarding the host to whom this disease is getting who is receiving this virus the host is the host factor coming under the epidemiological feature the host is children below 10 year it is affecting all age but commonly we can see this disease in children below 10 year of age okay that is the host factor and regarding the last one coming under the epidemiological features that is environment so in india it is mainly seen in first six months that is from january to june mainly it is affecting from january to may in india it is mainly seen in the first six months that is from january to june mainly it is affecting in january to may and overcrowding where the place the people are living in a congested area it will increase the transmission of the disease so overcrowding may favor the transmission of chicken pox and in India, it is mainly seen between January to June, mainly between the January to May. Okay. So, that is the environmental factor of the chicken pox. So, regarding the epidemiological features, agent, host and environment is there. So, regarding the agent, it is the varicella zoster virus and regarding the host, it is affecting the children below 10 years of age. It is affecting all ages, but commonly it is affecting the children below 10 year of age and regarding the environmental factor it is affecting during the first six months of the year as well as overcrowding will favor the transmission of the chicken pox next we can see regarding the mode of transmission okay next we can see regarding the mode of transmission of the disease so here how the disease is transmitted from a infected person to another person that is mode of transmission so mainly the chicken box is transmitted from one person to another by droplet infection by droplet infection by droplet infection that means through coughing and sneezing the drops will come out from a infected person and it will enter to the body of the normal person. 
So through the droplet infection, the chicken box is transmitted from one person to another as well as droplet nuclei also. Droplet nuclei. Droplet nuclei also will result in the mode of transmission. So what is droplet nuclei? Droplet nuclei means the waste product of the drops. After sneezing and coughing, some tiny particles will be there in the surroundings or in the environment. The waste product of the drops, that is droplet nuclei. It will be there in the environment. It will be there in the surroundings. It is also highly infectious. The tiny particle is infectious. It is the residue or the waste product of the drops. So, this is also a reason for the transmission of the uh, chicken pox. Okay. So, it is transmitted mainly through the face to face contact from a infected person to a healthy person. It is transmitted through face to face contact through the droplet as well as the droplet nuclei. So, if it is a non-infected person is there and an infected person is there and there is a face to face contact between these two persons soon they will get the infection okay and the portal of exit is upper respiratory tract the portal of exit that means the way through which the virus come out from a infected person to a normal or a healthy person okay that is portal of exit the way through which the virus here comes out to spread the disease to another person through the upper respiratory tract that is through the nose and the mouth this virus will come out to infect another person and the infectivity the infective power of the virus is one to two days before the appearance of the rashes one to two days before the appearance of the rashes as well as four to five days after the appearance of the rashes infective period that time the person who is having contact with the infected person he will also uh, have the chance to get the chicken pox that is one to two days before the appearance of the rash as well as four to five days after the appearance of the rash next we can see regarding the incubation period incubation period the incubation period so what is mean by incubation period incubation period means after the entry of a microorganism into the body and the time taken to show the symptom for example a virus chicken box virus has entered into your body but soon it will not show any signs and symptoms it will take a particular time period that is incubation period after the entry of the microorganism into the body then the time taken to show the symptom usually in chicken pox the incubation period is between 14 to 16 days 14 to 16 days okay usually 14 to 16 days but it is most commonly about 10 to 21 days 10 to 21 days we have to wait okay so usually you can see the incubation period is 14 to 16 but about 10 to 21 days is the exact incubation period of the chicken pox okay next we can see regarding the clinical features Next, we can see regarding the clinical features. The clinical features is mainly divided into pre-eruptive stage and eruptive stage. Mainly divided into pre-eruptive stage and eruptive stage. Okay. So, in the pre-eruptive stage, that is the first stage of the chicken pox mild to moderate fever will be there mild to moderate fever back pain malaise malaise means it's a state of feeling discomfort and illness and shivering is the signs and symptoms coming under the clinical features coming under the pre eruptive stage okay mild to moderate fever malaise then shivering and the 
back pain is the thing that is coming under the pre eruptive stage next the second stage is eruptive so here you have to note pre eruptive means before the appearance of the rashes okay before the eruption of the rashes so here in this stage rashes will not be there in the first stage the rashes will not be there next stage is eruptive stage that is after the appearance of the rashes that is eruptive stage after the appearance of the rashes so in children this may be the first sign appearance of the rash may be the first sign along with the fever it may start okay it may start along with the fever in children it may be the first sign okay so pre eruptive stage will last for 24 hour 24 hour only this stage will last pre eruptive stage but in healthy adult it may last up to 2 to 3 days okay so in healthy adult it may last up to 2 to 3 days but in eruptive stage it is after the occurrence of the rashes so the rashes will first start in the trunk part that is in the body part okay and it is mostly affected in the body part then it will affect the arms leg and the face but it is less affected in the face arm and leg as compared to the body part in the eruptive stage the rashes you can see in the trunk it will start in the trunk that is in the body part and it will move to the arm leg and the face usually the rashes are not seen in the palm of the hand as well as the sole it is not seen in the palm as well as the sole so regarding the clinical features two stages are there pre eruptive stage as well as the eruptive stage in the pre eruptive stage that is means before the occurrence of the rashes you can see the symptoms like the mild to moderate fever malaise shivering and back pain will be there and this stage will last for 24 hour only and in some adults it will last for 2 to 3 days second stage is eruptive stage here it is after the occurrence of the rashes in children it may be the first sign along with the fever it may start and the rashes will start mainly in the body then it will move towards the arms legs and face but mostly you can see the rashes in the trunk part and less in the face as well as the arm and the legs okay that is regarding the clinical features next we can see regarding the complications of chicken box complications of chicken box the main complication of the chicken box is uh, actually the life threatening complication of the chicken box is rare it is a self limiting disease so in chicken pox the life threatening of the death will occur that is very rarely only the death will occur it is a self limiting disease but in some cases especially in immunosuppressed patient that is the person who is having less immunity they will get pneumonia hemorrhage ray syndrome ray syndrome encephalitis okay so hemorrhage as well as the pneumonia ray syndrome encephalitis ray syndrome means after a viral infection it is mainly seen in children okay after a viral infection it is mainly seen in children it is a fatal disease so here degeneration of the fatty degeneration of the liver and brain will occur fatty degeneration of the liver as well as the brain will occur as well as increased intracranial pressure it is a fatal disease chance of death is high that is ray syndrome you can see among the children sometimes the complications and the encephalitis that is the inflammation of the brain that is the main complication of the uh, chicken pox as well as if it is a pregnant woman in the early stage of the pregnancy chicken pox is occurring means chance of abortion is there as well as if it is occurring during the pregnancy congenital deformity that is a birth defect to the child is a chance of the complication of chicken pox okay that is regarding the complications that is pneumonia hemorrhage ray syndrome 
then <coughs> encephalitis if it is a pregnant woman abortion is a chance as well as congenital deformity to the child and if it is a newborn chance of death is high if it is a newborn chance of death is high okay that is regarding the complication of chicken pox next we can see the laboratory diagnosis how to diagnose how to diagnose the chicken pox so regarding the clinical signs and symptom itself is a clear cut picture to do the diagnosis regarding the rashes regarding the signs and symptom itself is a good clear cut picture to do the diagnosis that is the diagnosis of chicken pox how to diagnose it regarding the clinical features according to the appearance of the rashes and regarding the signs and symptoms itself is a good thing to diagnose the chicken pox next we can see regarding the treatment of the chicken pox how to treat the chicken pox so regarding the treatment you have to advise the patient to drink plenty of water advise the patient to drink plenty of water to prevent dehydration to prevent the dehydration advise the patient to drink plenty of water as well as provide antipyretics that is paracetamol you have to provide to reduce the body temperature that means to reduce the fever as well as to reduce the pain and advise the client to apply calamine lotion that is soothing cream okay calamine lotion advise the client to apply calamine lotion to reduce the itching and discomfort it is a soothing cream now you can give acyclovir that is the antiviral medicine okay it is antivirus medicine that is acyclovir acyclovir medication also can be given to treat the chicken box it is mainly given to the children above the 14 years of age the children who are healthy we are not providing antiviral medication like acyclovir okay next we can see regarding the control measures of the chicken box how to control chicken box first of all you have to isolate the patient okay you have to isolate the patient after the appearance of the rashes up to 6 days up to 6 days you have to isolate the patient after the appearance of the rashes okay isolation means separating the infected person from a healthy person that is isolation you have to isolate the chicken pox patient from a healthy person up to 6 days after the appearance of the rashes as well as disinfect the clothes used by the patient disinfect the utensils used by the patients which have the nasopharyngeal secretions okay so you have to disinfect the clothes and utensils used by the patient okay next we can see regarding the prevention okay regarding the prevention first one is varicella zoster immunoglobulin okay varicella zoster immunoglobulin is the first prevention it should be given within 72 hours of exposure especially to the immuno suppressed patient that is the person who is having poor immunity for example hiv or aids patient immuno suppressed patients pregnant woman or to the pregnant woman you have to give immunoglobulin that is varicella zoster immunoglobulin that is vz ig varicella zoster immunoglobulin you have to give within 72 hour of the exposure that is within 3 day you have to give varicella zoster immunoglobulin suppose a person has a contact with a infected person of chicken pox within 3 days if you are giving varicella zoster immunoglobulin we can prevent that infection especially it is highly effective in immunosuppressed patient that is the patient who is having less immunity so you have to give 12.5 unit per kg body weight 
you have to give im 12.5 unit per kg body weight im you have to give the varicella zoster immunoglobulin now repeat after the three week repeat the thing after the three week to prevent the attack of chicken pox okay and regarding the attack if one time attack has occurred the person will get the lifelong immunity rarely only the second time attack will occur if one time it is infected lifelong he will get the immunity very rare case only the second cases are reported lifelong immunity he will get okay next we can see the next prevention that is vaccine okay that is live attenuated varicella virus vaccine the second prevention is live attenuated varicella virus vaccine can be administered okay through the vaccine also we can prevent chicken pox or varicella so this is recommended to the children between 12 to 18 months between 12 to 18 months of age okay between 12 to 18 months of age children who is not having the history of chicken box who is not at all infected before this time he is not at all having any history of chicken box we can give this vaccine the time is between 12 to 18 months this vaccine is also effective okay the name of the vaccine is live attenuated varicella virus vaccine that is regarding the prevention so in the prevention mainly varicella zoster immunoglobulin you can give within 72 hours of the exposure as well as you can give the vaccine to the small children between 12 to 18 months of age that's all regarding the chicken box we'll meet soon with another video till that time thank you and goodbye